Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today. This is Philosophy. So today's video is gonna be an overview. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Today's video is gonna be an overview of my revised financial goals for well my whole life. I recently switched careers into a more coast fire type of lifestyle where I'm working part time at a local craft brewery. If you haven't seen my recent video about what's involved in my current job at a craft brewery, I will link it above and down below so you can check that out. But we're gonna go through some of my financial goals and how some of these things have changed just talking about life and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. If you enjoy financial videos, travel lifestyle, please consider subscribing to get more of this kind of content and to support my channel going forward. I would love to have you as part of the team. So when I started looking for property back at the end of 2020, I believe I was pretty set on buying a detached home. I really didn't want to have to deal with a condo board and being in a condo and not being able to do renovations at any point in time and having a lot of like really strict rules around pets so I initially was very against buying a condominium I had my heart set on detached I looked at quite a few homes before I started looking at condos and there was just nothing in my price range in any area that I really enjoyed so I ended up going ahead and purchasing a condo and a few months after that I purchased a second condo for my mom to live in and she ended up moving from Ottawa, where I'm from, out to Calgary. There's been a few hiccups along the way. I've been in this condominium for about a year and a half, and my mom has been in the other condo for about a year. So it turns out that my mom is looking to potentially move to the eastern part of Canada, and I was really planning on her staying in the unit that I owned like for a very long time. So I'm in the process of actually selling that unit because I just don't really want to be a landlord at this point in time. If you don't know, I am in the process of getting ready to move to New Zealand for a couple years in about 10 months, I think now. So I really just want to get rid of that unit and have a bit of equity coming back out of the property so that I can do a few different things with it. And I'm hoping that it's going to sell. It's been up for, I think, just a week now and have just had a few showings. If I can't sell it, I will end up renting it out, but that is the plan. Long story short, I potentially will be selling the condo that I live in currently. Why, you may ask, not only because we're moving to New Zealand, but because I'm still kind of tied to wanting a detached home. I started doing a patio garden last year and this year I was really excited for it. I put a lot of time and energy into building a garden and it just hasn't really panned out the way that I wanted it to. There's a lot more work involved when you have to do it in like pots and move them around and take them in and out of pots, put them in bigger pots and everything. And I just kind of dream of a life where I have a backyard and like a garden and a place to do things like a workshop. I'd love to get into something like woodworking. So it's back on my plate that I want to purchase a detached home probably within the next five years, I'm gonna say. My budget for that is around $400,000, which is why I would be selling both of the properties because the equity in both of those properties is about $85,000, which is right around what I would need to purchase a detached home for about $400,000. This is something that I, you know, I was kind of, thinking I would eventually get to that point again where I would want to move into a detached home. It just happened quite a bit sooner than I thought. Not that I don't like living in a condo. I do like living in a condo because it's really low maintenance and the location is just everything, right? Location is everything when it comes to real estate. I would never be able to afford a detached home in the area that I live in now. So it's nice to be able to enjoy my some of my younger years in like a downtown city center, being able to walk everywhere. So I'm gonna have to really think about things and really look for the right place. But that is something I'm really setting my sights on. It's buying a completely detached property with my own backyard and everything and having that paid off in retirement and then doing something like a reverse mortgage to be able to fund my retirement because I will never have children and I don't want to leave anything behind, especially something like, you know, half a million dollar property that might increase in value. Right now I have 65% of my net worth in property, which is just a little bit more than I want. Initially when I bought both properties, I wasn't planning on leaving my corporate job. So I figured that that like percentage wouldn't stay that way for very long. But now that I'm more living a coast fire lifestyle, working part time, kind of doing my own thing in a lower paying job, 
I think it's time to get some of that equity out of the real estate market and put it into something like index funds. So now let's talk about retirement. Retirement is something I've always been kind of interested in, but it's never been my main goal. I really wanted to escape the rat race and really get out of my corporate job. And now that I've done that, I think that I actually will enjoy working until at least traditional retirement age of 65, potentially older if I'm like in good health and really enjoying what I'm doing. YouTube is something that I wanna get more serious about. I think this could be a really good job for me. I think I like being my own boss, managing my own schedule and being able to do work from anywhere. So it's something that I do actually wanna put more time into and make more quality content. So of course, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys watching my videos, liking, subscribing, leaving comments down below, all of that really helps me out, not only with motivating me to actually make videos, but getting close to monetization where I'll actually be able to make some money from doing YouTube and potentially do it more frequently, do it at a higher level or a higher quality and be able to make more and more content for you guys. So again, thank you so much for continuing to support my channel. I really, really appreciate that. So retirement, let's talk about the Government of Canada website calculator for retirement. This is the one that I use when I want a closer look as to what I need to save combined with CPP, Canadian Pension Plan and OAS, Old Age Security, what I need to save on my end in order to have like a comfortable retirement. So right now I have $50,000 in investments in an RRSP. They are invested in mainly index funds. If I start drawing down from that $50,000 investment and I never add a single dime to it going forward, I can expect about $6,350 a year starting at age 65 and going to age 90, which is my projected how long I'm going to live for. Next up is CPP. So CPP is something you have to work and pay into for a really long time. So the figures that I'm using for this are averages, and this is me potentially working until 65. Of course, that is kind of part of my plan, part of my Coast Fire plan. So if I were to take CPP at 65, I can expect to net about $8,050 a year again from age 65 until 90. If I were to delay those payments until 70, which is the latest you can delay getting CPP, I can expect just over $11,400 a year from age 70 to 90. And then OAS or old age security, if I were to take that at age 65, I can expect $8,000 a year. This would leave me with a total of about $22,400 a year in retirement from age 65 to 90. This is including the figure of CPP at age 65, not the one at 70, by the way. My goal for retirement spending is about $24,000 a year. Keep in mind, this does include a paid off home like we touched on before. I am planning on having a home that's completely paid off. So all I will have to pay for is things like maintenance and property tax and things like that. And I do plan on doing the majority of the traveling I wanna do within the next 30, 35 years. I don't wanna delay it until I'm older. I don't need my travel bank to be huge in retirement. I wanna get the majority of that done now. Although I want it to be an option, I think $24,000 a year, that is adjusted for inflation, of course, in terms of when I do my calculations. But I think that that will be a comfortable retirement. And there are things like top-ups for seniors who have low incomes as well. That's something that could come into play if something were to happen. And of course, the math that I just did, that is based on me never adding a single dime into my retirement savings, which is not really what I am going to be doing. I do want to start putting money back into my RRSPs at some point. I need to go ahead and max out my TFSA again because I used all of my TFSA money for down payments on the properties that I own. So my TFSA is pretty much empty at the moment and I do want to just sink a bunch of money into that for retirement as well. So I don't plan on never putting money into retirement. This is just me looking at it in such a way that, hey, if I wanted to, like I wouldn't have to put a dime into that and I would still be okay at 65 at traditional retirement age. So for financial goals, not just retirement, I'm gonna get into a few things, uh, things that I'm saving for, things I'm currently saving for. So I, like I said, I'm moving to New Zealand next year for one or two years, I'm not really sure yet, 
but I do want to save up about $10,000 in order to get started there. That does not include any kind of flights or the first months of accommodation. I am going to be booking that ahead of time, but I do want to have a surplus of $10,000 just to have in cash, just in case I potentially need it, or I have a really hard time finding work there. So that $10,000 is either going to come from me selling my second property or it's going to come from me just saving up. I am moving to a more full-time type of hour schedule at my current job at the brewery. And I did get a little bit of a raise to 20 bucks an hour. So that will help and I will be able to set a little bit of money aside going forward. I've also done the math on that retirement calculator based on me adding another $20,000 lump sum to it once my, or I should say, if my mom's property sells, I will get about $30,000 back from that that I have in equity after fees and everything. If I put $20,000 of that into my investments, that would give me $70,000 in investments for retirement, which is just shy of $25,000 a year from age 65 to 90. So it is a little bit safer if I did like never want to put another dime into my retirement savings that like came off my paychecks. If I just did this lump sum of $20,000, I'd be pretty well set a little bit above like what my actual goal is. I think the biggest thing for me right now is really thinking about property. And if I want to keep the current place that I'm in or sell it before going to New Zealand, doing the whole investing thing, and then starting to save for, you know, an actual detached home in the future. There are a ton of trips that I want to take. New Zealand is of course the biggest one. I do want to focus the majority of my savings to go towards that right now. I would love to go to places like Europe. I also want to save about $10,000 in order to get my private pilot's license. So these are all things that I'm going to be slowly saving towards. The biggest thing right now is of course New Zealand because it's happening in like 10 months or so, which is wild to me that it's already like ticking down so quickly, but I am looking at retirement and looking at fire in a different way now and moving to a different country, experiencing a totally different culture. New Zealand's almost like as far away as you can possibly get from like where I live right now. It's just in the middle of nowhere. There's so many areas in that part of the world that I would love to see. And I know that me saving up a bit of money and not working like a traditional job right now. Yeah, this is probably going to eat into my net worth like a little bit, but I'm trying to do what I can for that to not happen by getting out of the second property. I think I can make a little bit more money in putting it into index funds in terms of like long-term investing. But this is something I've wanted to do for so long. And I think just not doing it because of opportunity costs. And that is one of the reasons why I didn't do it before was because of opportunity costs. And I think, the pandemic put everything into perspective. Leave me a comment down below about what your financial goals are, if the pandemic has changed anything for you and what big ticket items you're saving for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.